we'll call the uh, November 15th select board meeting to order. We've got Dave Sawyer, Brad Town, myself, Justin Lawrence. Looks like Flo's here. There's John with us. John's not going to be able to join tonight. All right. Any uh, additions? Yes. <clears throat> okay, so we have a, a, a budget discussion with Diane, uh, a letter of support that needs, if the board elects to, for VAST for their grant. Yep. And then to add to the municipal road grant, also the at that time frame, um, tires for the loan purchase. And I would just recommend that we do the, the budget discussion after the 650 item on the agenda. We'll just go through the agenda, and then after the letters discussion, we That's do the budget and the basket. Pick up everything. Yeah. Okay. Um, any public comment? So the only question I had was the item that I'm <coughs> for because it's going to be involving a couple of contracts. I didn't know if it was better in executive session or how that worked. I figured I'd just mention it. I'm okay to stay late. It's for the, the change orders on the Fisher Road call. What do you guys think? Is that an executive session? I don't think it is, is that? That's fine. I just figured it out. So. I appreciate that. Public comment, you said? Yep. Uh, okay. Can you uh, introduce yourself? Let's yes. Okay. My name is Karen Russell Bean. My husband is Scott Bean. Okay. Go ahead. As brief as possibly can, being that we are the public and we have the right to notify the public of what we feel is deception by one of your board members here. Uh, Justin, I want to move a point. Our home. Oh, this Bill is Bill a. Camper. Hold on. Hold this on. is a uh, contract, a breach of contract that are in, and it's a personal matter and a business matter. It has nothing to do with town business. Okay. It's public. Um, well. Protection. Sorry. I understand. Well, I, I, um, let me ask a quick question. Sure. The uh, is. Is it to do with town business or public business? Public. We want to What do you mean by public? Public. We want the public to be aware of this issue that happened to us through this person. So So is it a is it a contract matter? Is that what you're saying? Proposal slash contract. Okay. So how tell tell me how this ties in with the town. It does not. Okay. So this is this but is I the board know. meeting. I'm sorry. This is a board meeting. Okay. For the municipality and decisions for the town. Okay. So one of my, I understand why you're here for a grievance of some sort, and I respect that, and I appreciate you coming in. Um, what I would like to ask is that if it's not, I mean, there. it's okay. If it's not a municipal matter, is it a permitting issue? No. Is it a zoning issue? No. Does it, is there a violation with any of our, our town ordinances or no, anything sir. in this? Okay. So, is it more of a personal issue? Or a contract. I mean, it's a contract issue. I Personal understand contracts. what you're saying. It's a contract dispute. I've had disputes with contractors in the past, myself. Okay. Um, and it was a civil matter, not a town matter. Right. So, I understand that. So I, I understand but that I there might be some frustrations. But public meeting. And he's on the select board. That so people a, should be aware. That is that. So, of how we were left. As an elected official, I don't believe that has anything to do with business practice, unfortunately, if okay. that's how you're feeling. Um, I may, Brad, I'm going to put you on the spot here for a minute and help with some of your expertise. Um, have you ever had a situation like this in the past? No, but if, it's, if it doesn't pertain to town business, it. Understandable. Right. I, I would give you the floor if it. If it fit within what it was supposed to um, for town business, but right. is it is not really town, go ahead, Scott, that, that, was it? Yeah, Scott, but doesn't it, he, he lives in town, he's on the select board, 
showing it mean to the public that this person is, this person is and what he has What's done? happened to us in our home? Well, uh, uh, no, yes and no. I mean, in all reality, I, if I go do something in another town, right, or, or you don't like me as a, an individual, or you disagree with some of the actions I may choose in my life, that doesn't really have anything to, that doesn't have any bearing on right. other areas necessarily. So I understand frustrations, I understand concerns, I understand wanting to voice an opinion or wanting to spread a message, you know, so that people right. are aware. What I would ask is that if you think it is something that we could probably in the future prevent by having an ordinance or anything like that, that you would go through the proper channels, um, which would potentially be like a planning commission thing if you think it was a contract or a permitting issue or, or something like that, or not necessarily a contract, but more like the permitting piece. Um, but if it's if it's not town related, I re we really can't get into it. Okay. You know, I, I, I like your point though. It's, I want to protect other people from this kind of behavior and so-called professionalism. You're left. Can I ask you a question real quick? Hold no. on. No. Let no. me. Just let me. They're in a clear breach of contract. No, I'm over not. three right, weeks. Let's not get into it. Stop. Okay. You're not. You are. No, okay. I don't want to get into any no of them. Any party. No, we're, we're just, we're, we're here because we feel Berlin public because he's on the select board. Well, it's not, it's not making it about individuals. It's talking about our no, policy with contractors in the former town board. or something like that. But. Somebody that's on the select board, I feel that if he's doing this to people, what, what's there, he doing there, for the community of, of Berlin? The community. There's, probably a lot of, Berlin. there's probably a lot of people that disagree with my positions or right. my views on some, several things. Um, there's a process for removal from office, and that that's not necessarily here. That's that's right. signatures, right. things like that. It, it, I would suggest reviewing that if that's something you want to pursue. But other than that, we can't get into that this meeting. No problem. Thank and, you. And who Appreciate we, it. Who will we get a hold of? Who who are the people to talk to on that matter? About it, the the policy or the procedure for that? Yeah. It's pretty simple. It's right on our website, or you can actually Vince would be happy to forward yeah. that information. Yeah. I can provide that information about yeah. what the procedure is, the policy. And, and it's as simple as that. I apologize if, it, that's, but. That's yeah. fine. No, we've learned just, something and. Just trying. And, well, me too. It's the first time I've dealt with anything like We this, don't so. see restitution, but we're here to protect the public. It's a civil matter, so yeah. it would be. Any other public comment? Hearing none, fire department survey discussion. Joe, do you want to come right up to the table? You got your laptop with you? I believe we have Keith that will be probably answering. Keith, Keith is on. Oh, oh, yeah. Hey, Keith. How you doing, Justin? Excellent. How are you? Feeling better. Thank goodness. What do you got for us with this survey data? Do you, uh, did, Flo, did you have a chance to review the data? I have not had a chance to review the data, so I'm looking forward to the discussion this evening. Thank you. Okay. I didn't go through a bunch of it. Um, did anybody else on the board have an opportunity to go through the data? I know we've been asking for it for a while, and then I didn't, I didn't have an opportunity. I apologize. Brent, did you? No. I suspected not. <laughs> um, what do you want to, can you share with us a little bit about the data that you sent us, I guess? Well, there's a whole lot of data, it, you know, it's the individual responses from all hundred or so people that responded from the town. Plus there's a lot of broken down call volume times and um, run response times, which are then all of that is combined into the the survey results that we gave you. Uh, the raw data to me is 
a lot to parse through and it, it's best in my opinion dealt with by looking at the results that was provided previously so um if you have questions about it i'd be happy to answer okay my apologies for not being as prepared as we could have been um i didn't get a chance to review it uh what this to a later yeah I think that's probably the best thing I I want to I want a chance to review it I want I would like flow to review it we made some changes recently there um, I was hoping we could have a discussion on this well I think we all want to have it much sooner um, but we probably move it to the flow do you think you could review that before the next meeting or do you think you need a two week two meetings my next meeting would suffice. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Is there anything you want to add, Joe? I, I think uh, I wouldn't mind. I'll sit down with Flo and go go through it with her, so she. I know it's at it, least would be able to then present it to you guys as a group. Right. I know there's a lot of information there. I know that it's not in the format that you guys put together. So you know, she her perspective may be helpful for us to understand it and maybe ask some additional follow-up questions as a board. Um, anything else? No, nope. okay. we'd be happy to be here again in two weeks. Thank you. Sorry. Thank Joe. you, Keith. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. What do you think, Brad? Two weeks not great. Well, it's, gonna be more than, it's gonna be more than two weeks anyway. Get this boss started. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. Is that what you were thinking? Yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't know if you wanted to hold it off another day. Or not. <laughs> okay. Next one. Yep. Uh, discussion on deferred comp. Yep. We have Mr. Owen. Again, we, we talked about this briefly with Mr. Owen. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Months ago. Yes. Can you guys hear me okay? Oh. Yep. Yeah. Uh, super. I'll try to make this brief too, to kind of get you guys back on schedule as well. Um, but basically the deferred compensation plan is an additional benefit you guys can offer your employees. Basically just offering them an optional type of retirement savings account for them to utilize. Now it's something you can not just offer to full-time employees, but it can be something for part-time, per diem, temporary employees. So we've seen different, you know, states, municipalities use it for basically anyone on payroll as an option. Um, something the employee can open up at any time. There's only a enrollment time frame on it. There's no match required by the town. So it sounds like the only cost to the town would be on the payroll side of things. I think we kind of touched on that a little bit the last time. Um, would kind of be the only cost there. There is an administrative fee for the plan and that's actually charged to the participants and how the fees work to the participants a percentage of the assets. And think about basically 35 cents for every $1,000. Um, there's no fiduciary responsibilities for the town either. So all the investment options, constant monitoring of all the plan, oversight, staying compliant, all that's handled by the state and Prudential. Base.com is a free resource as well for you guys to help the employees, help them understand the benefits, but also two different financial planning tools as well. Um, this is type of account that they have more flexibility with versus the Beamer's pension. Um, type of account where there's old IRA accounts, old employer, like old 401ks that can consolidate into this deferred comp plan, something they can't do with the Beamers. But also, too, this is that flexible type of account. So someone would think of in retirement, maybe they are our benefit they don't do they do have the pension maybe they're drawn from social security something happens they want to go on a trip their roof goes they can't dig into their pension they can't dig into their social security this is that flexible type of savings account that they can have um looking at i mean you know why not offer another benefit that's an optional type of retirement or savings account for the employees i mean really you know no one ever saves too much from retirement um that being said do you guys kind of have any questions regarding the plan or anything else I can answer for you on my end how long is that so you guys from Prudential you're you're the administrative you're the fiduciary for this what how long are you contracted with the state for this at this point so it goes every five years um, it's we Prudential took it over back in 2018 from Empower and Empower actually held it for 15 years prior to that 
the state made the switch in 2018 based for two main reasons. One was that administrative fee, that potential cut in half, so it used to be 0.07%, now it's at 0.035%. Right. And then also two, Empower was pushing what they call the managed account option, where basically anyone who didn't want to you uh, pick their own investments would use that managed account option which had another fee attached to it and Prudential has a tool called goal maker it's a free tool to help simplify that so that's why the state made the switch again helping out for the you know participants cutting the fees in half making another free resource for them but then two just full disclosure empowered also did just buy out Prudential's retirement arm so going into next year it will be back with empower but the fees and everything that are on the contract now with the plan still stay the same. So there's still another two years part of the state's contract that and any proposed changes, they can have like one year extensions as well. I would say probably the biggest part going into next year when it does transition to empower is probably that following year to see if they will make any adjustments or kind of keep the plan in the fees and things as is, which I'm sure will probably happen. Right. So, I mean, it's completely voluntary. It's a 0. 0.35 basis point. Uh, 0. 0.035. Well, it's, yeah, 0.35 percent. Right. Management fee. Yeah, 0. 0.035 percent. Correct. Yeah, that's an annual amount. Prudential just takes it out quarterly. 0. 0.035. Okay. What's the? Uh, how much more administration? I think we uh, talked hey, about it. Well, it's probably the setup, which is not, you know, not any more than like what I did for Outlook. Uh, and as far as fees, I did check with pay data, and there's no additional fees. I think that it might yes. be a s slight uptick in um, what we have each pay period. Right now, we're like seventy dollars pay per pay period. It might go up to seventy one or something like that, just because there's something else. So it's really minuscule. About. As far as workload for you, it's nothing. Not much. No, just the initial is something, probably a half an hour to an hour, and because I have to set it up with pay data, mm -hmm. and then after that, it's it's done. Okay. I do have to write a check every month, I guess. Probably monthly checks from, uh, like I do for Aflac and right. for the others like that. Yep. So are we looking for a motion to accept it? Accept it. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Acceptance agreement from the folder. Yep. So right now we only have the, the pension option. We don't have like a four hundred one k like the deferred. Only. Yeah. Right. So you can't have lump sums of money in retirement with the Beamers, right? And this adds to it for the Right, because Beamers, the, the one that all of us are in right now, the Beamers defined benefit. Right. So you can't put in extra money. Right. You know, just because your age, on some you can, mm -hmm. more with a 401k that we don't have. Yep. I mean, I, I personally, I like the deferred comp. I think it's a good option. It's completely voluntary, so. And if it's not going to be an administrative expense that's significant to us, I think it's a great benefit to have to people. You can also offer two for part time per diem too. I mean, obviously that's something up to you guys. Um, but so for some people maybe that aren't benefit enough to have the Beamer's pension, could be just another benefit as well. True. What's the the portability? I mean, obviously. There's no vesting; it's all their money. So, upon termination of contract, it's a, you typically 30 days, right? I mean, like, so there's no time frame. So once they stop working for the town, basically at that point they have access to the funds. Um, something where they could take it and roll it over to their new employer's retirement account and keep it going with them that way if they wanted. They could just keep as is. They just wouldn't be able to contribute to it. No longer be an employee of the town anymore. Um, and the type of account, so you mentioned 401k, it's a 457B, kind of think of it like a 401k. But with this type of account, there's no penalty regardless of age. Right. Well, be my, that a lot of 401ks, if you take money out prior to age 59 and a half, there's that 10% penalty. That doesn't apply to a 457B, which this account is for a comp plan. Right. Technically, this isn't a qualified plan. This is non-qualified, correct? Oh, well, technically it's qualified, um, so it's still subject to like the contribution limits and things that retirement accounts are, but it's one where when you take the money out, if you put it in pre-tax, you're seen as taxable income at that distribution. Right. 
I would entertain a motion. Unless you have questions. Uh, move to approve uh, the municipal 457 divert, uh, deferred compensation plan for uh, town employees. I'll second. second. Any discussion? Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Ron, thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. You Owen. Sign it or do you want to authorize me to sign Thank you, Gary. I'll be in touch soon. It's a new package. It's the last yeah, one. Yeah. Um, well, is it just for the chair? Just so it doesn't specify. I'd entertain another motion in the letter. Town administrator sign it. So moved. Second. Second. Any, any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Hey, Got it. All right. Good point, Vince. All right, Otter Creek discussion on Fisher Road culvert and change order. Sure. So a quick update on the project. I don't know if anybody's been over there recently, but as of last Friday, they had all of the pieces set um, and uh, it has been grouted in. So the footings are done. Those structures there are set. And basically the schedule for the next couple of weeks is to um, tie rebar on the top. Those pieces come in two halves. They butt against each other like this. And in those halves, there's actually like an open uh, top piece that has rebar in both um, uh, arches that come together, both halves. And so they need to be lapped over and then a cap pour is done over top. And once that's done, which it's gonna happen this week, um, it has to set for three days um, and we need to make sure it's up to strength. But provided it's up to strength, they'll be able to start backfilling and setting the wing walls and the head walls and everything else that kind of comes with that. So from this point forward, it should be moving uh, fairly quickly. Uh, it's that time of year where nothing moves quickly because we're out of daylight and the weather doesn't cooperate and we have holidays all the time. But I think we've turned the corner and you know headed in the right direction. So um, that's the general update. That all went smooth. Um, so I, I spoke with, <coughs> talked to Chip Legu earlier, and he was, we were talking, he's got a lot of fellow getting ready to go over there or whatever, but um, one of the things where, are we going to be able to get temporary pavement in this year, do you think? I, I don't think so. Um, I think that it's going to be close. It's that time of year where, depending on how quick the backfill goes and what the process is, it could happen, you know, especially if we have decent weather, but... The way my luck has been this year and the way the weather has turned, I would expect that it's going to get cold and miserable over the next couple of weeks. So that's going to be a mess with salt and all that over the winter if they're, you know, because that's one of the things Tim mentioned. I mean, if, if you don't pave it, it's just going to allow the cars to beat the packed gravel. I think that's where we left it earlier this summer, you know, when we talked about schedule and trying to get yeah. it in this year. I, I, my un understanding was you know, worst case, we'd get to a point where it'd be left gravel, and that's the way the contract actually set up with Dubois, is to leave it gravel. Um, and that would allow the traffic to go over. It's no different. It's a, it's a wide enough area where it's not like a patch that would be prone to potholes, like a trench patch or something like that. So, um, But it will require some maintenance and stuff in the spring, probably, and that's that's part of their contract to fill okay. that in. I would um, think that Pike has a, they'd be closing the asphalt plant here pretty quick. Usually it's around the 15th of the month, so of November, so yeah. they probably already have a projected closing date. I haven't checked with them, to be honest, but it's usually then, sometimes we get lucky and it extends to Thanksgiving. A little bit. But yeah. I don't think we're going to be at a point where we'd be able to do that by that point. Carries. Yep. Okay. How are the the uh, the other uh, infrastructures? Are they laid in there now, or are they still supported? So they're all temporarily in. So the water line we actually relocated, that's... Um, that's looped in that area, so it, it crosses over here at Applebee's and goes down the road that way, and it also crosses up by the hospital. And so right now it's actually dead-ended both ways. So part of the project is to put that loop back, but from like a worried about utility perspective, it's good the way that it is, um, and we just need to basically put 100 feet in. The sewer's been temporarily relocated, and that's covered up with frost blankets and hay, um, and we've made some operational changes with the sewer system to... Um, increase the amount of times that the pumps cycle over just to pre prevent it from freezing. But sewer also is warmer than water um, yeah. in general. So. Now you pulled your pumps out of the brook? Not yet. 
um, and it seems like every day it rains. It it comes up to a point where it's getting ready to crest over. Um, the schedule, the short-term schedule right now is once we get that cap board done, we'll be able to backfill, and that'll allow. If you've been down there, they actually put all of the stone and the riprap inside that underneath it and they're going to use a small machine small mini excavator in there to push that around and regrade it and backfill it along the inside they just can't do that until that cap force runs so we're about a week away and then those pumps will come out um, they ran into some challenges there you know on one side of the site it was really really soft material um, thick blue clay and on the other side it was really really hard till they ended up driving sheet piles on the side that's closer to Northfield Savings Bank um, at their cost, basically, uh, because it was just so difficult on that side. Um, and the sheets over there, um, they they got to take those out. And so what they're going to do is pull the sheets out before they take the temporary water bypass off. So worst case, it would be probably two more weeks of water bypass. So. A, a couple of things that have come up with the project. I'm, I'm not sure what Vince has gotten you guys all up to speed on. We had a, a few different things. We had uh, a contract with Contact to supply mm -hmm. the structure, do the engineering for the structure, and then supply it. And then we had a contract with Dubois to do the earthwork piece. Mm -hmm. And I have a couple of pieces of paperwork to resolve. One of them was just more of a clerical change. Um, midway through the project, we uh, talked with Dubois and they wanted control over the schedule for the delivery of the trucks. They felt like they could better manage how those pieces were delivered and having seen it, I think they did a good job with it. Is that the change order number that's, one? That's change order here? number one. I just want to make sure yeah. everybody can see it. Change order what number one. <clears throat> that's essentially a net zero change. Basically what we did was we took that $50,400 out of the contract with Contact and we, we need to move it into Dubois's contract. Uh, there's no increase to the town uh, for that change order. They they actually did a fantastic job scheduling that. They had trucks coming in and out, and it worked really so, well. And, um, um, but yeah, it did. And they did a good job. So that, that's what that was for, was to just change their schedule. Just, okay. just, again, at the end, signature either by you or authorizing me to sign. Just want to put that out. Thanks, man. So this, the second piece was an issue that came up, and maybe it's better to uh, give a little bit of history and I don't want to take up too much of your time but if you guys recall when we had a, a meeting back in May about the project uh, we talked about schedule and at that time we were looking at somewhere between 16 and 20 weeks of lead time related to the structure and at that time um, we had the contract set up so that it would be bid as one primary contract meaning we would bid both the struck you know the purchase of that precast and the earthwork as one big project. And we started looking at schedule back then, and we couldn't make the timeline work to open up the road this year, just following that process, um, because they were gonna be somewhere between six and eight weeks after we signed a contract with whoever that was before they could start making and ordering components on the structure. Okay. And so I came to you guys, and we actually solicited a, an updated quote from Contact to do the engineering, and essentially order the mesh, which was the big lead time item in that arch, mm -hmm. uh, back in June. Yep. And at that time, we were also out to bid for the earthwork portion of this, you know, the, the digging, utility relocation, all of that stuff. And uh, so bidders like Dubois were relying on the information that we had available at that time. I have with me a sketch that I didn't get to Vince, and I'd be happy to make a copy and give it to everybody. But basically, I'll circulate it. The top is what was included in the bid. And the bottom is what we ultimately ended up having to do. Um, so basically, uh, in the bid, we had included a nine and a half foot wide footing with a foot of crushed stone underneath it. And that was based on conversations that we had with Contech and conversations that we had with our geotechnical engineer, SW Cole. Um, but the way that that precasting process works, um, and I have a copy of your contract with Contech, is they actually take our plans, they take our bearing capacity, basically how much weight can the soil hold, and they go through a formal submittal and shop drawing and engineering calculation process. And they will not do that with us, no, no precaster will do that with us in advance of signing a contract. And so back in June, we had had preliminary conversations with them, they had that information, we had gone through it, um, but they had not issued final 
drawings, if you will, related to their structure. Um, so we went on that information. That's what Du Bois bid. Uh, Contact in the middle of construction identified that they had used the um, the, lo the higher of the two loading numbers, meaning they picked the wrong one, for lack of a better term. If they had used the lower value, the footing either needed to be larger to accommodate that weight, or we needed to dig down and put more stone in and do what's called a ground improvement to that. And so we this, this came up actually right around Labor Day. Mm -hmm. uh, had a site meeting with Vince and others and just kind of went through what the options were. And they all had different implications. Going with a 16 foot wide footing instead of a nine and a half foot wide footing would on the um, on the east side, the side closest to the hospital, you can imagine that road goes up very steep. The amount of excavation, the amount of uh, reach that the crane would need, be a significantly larger crane, it just wasn't feasible. So what we opted to recommend was uh, doing the overdig, which is essentially putting in an additional three feet of stone putting that trapezoidal shape underneath it, and you're, you're creating essentially a bearing pad. And that was on a recommendation of our geotechnical engineer. Um, and that kept the footing at basically 10 feet wide instead of nine and a half feet, uh, which essentially kept it close to the contract. It just resulted in additional digging. Uh, at the time in September, um, we didn't know what we were gonna get into on the other side. So when we do the design of these types of projects, we typically do two soil borings, one on the east footing and one on the west footing, and they had slightly different materials, but we we did one boring on each side on a footing that's 135 feet long, right? Um, we could have made Swiss cheese this site, spent 100 grand and poked 100 holes and not found some of the stuff that we found, uh, to be honest, but we didn't do that. We, we'd go on our judgment. And so whenever you do these types of projects, you carry a little bit of contingency to deal with changes in soil conditions because you don't know what you can't see. And um, so I made a recommendation to Vince in September to uh, go with the time and material estimate from Dubois. I thought that their estimate was maybe a little bit conservative, uh, meaning it might have been a little bit high. Uh, and rather than have them take the risk and do it for a lump sum, you know, I, I suggested that we do it on a time and material basis. Change order two uh, is that change order. Essentially, they finished about $10,000 under their estimate from the original piece, except, um, like everything we do, we start digging and opening up that old road, and we found old buried headwalls in the ground that needed to be hammered out and some other things that actually kept the cost about the same. Um, strictly looking at the footing piece, we saved about ten grand. It cost about $35,000 instead of the forty-five or forty-six that they were looking at. Um, but when we added in the hammer to remove the, the head walls and the other stuff that was down there, it, it basically became a wash. Um, from my perspective, there's a couple of things. The town has three contracts. You have one with Dubois, you have one with me at Otter Creek Engineering, and you have one with Contech. Uh, the first piece is whether or not everybody here agrees that this is a change in Dubois's contract. And you know, from my perspective, as I said all along, this is a change in what they bid. You know, we have to pay them for the additional work that they're doing. Um, I recommend that the town, you know, authorize that change order for that additional uh, stone and and process that. That's that's kind of the first piece, and and I think that hopefully that sketch at least pictorially shows right. the differences between the two. So I think some of the questions we had as a town was yeah I understand Du Bois had to change some of their order. Yeah. Um, you guys are what I would say are trusted advisors. Mm -hmm. um, we look to you for for the to, to to do this whole bid process. Honestly. Yeah. Um, th that's your job. That's why we're paying you. Um, and I feel like th this change was outside of what we anticipated. Um, typically, there are costs that go over on a project, obviously. Um, but if you guys engineered it or designed it wrong, which it doesn't sound like you did, 
that how is that a liability for the town? Um, but it sounds like contact might have sent some bad information, or was yeah, it, was it where was the issue? So maybe I mean, like we're, break it down in just plain old English. Yeah, me. yeah. So I think it's a timing thing. So we had preliminary information from them, and in, in order to get it built this year, I mean, we, we had a conversation, if you remember, probably in June, yeah, related to, related to risk, right? So what are the town's mm -hmm. risks with doing it this way? So because we they're that because they're time when we ordered the culvert. Yeah, yeah. So their their price came in almost a hundred thousand dollars higher than the quote that they had given me in December. And I recall coming here and talking with you all, and it might have been Brad who asked, you know, what's the town's risk if we move forward? And I think the risk is that you're trying to handle certain aspects of the project that wouldn't necessarily be um, included that way, uh, you know, at that time. So, the, as I mentioned, the way that these typically work, if it was part of Dubois's contract to contract with Contact, the engineering and that would have. So why wouldn't you guys have caught that and made us aware of that in the process before we went and did this? So the, the difference was they didn't give us final engineering values. They wouldn't do that without this signed contract. We were already out to bid in order to meet the schedule with Dubois. They hadn't. They were six weeks after this signed contract before they gave us calculations. How could we Dub go out to bid if that was the case? I'm just. I'm trying to wrap we, my head no, around we, time. We split them up. We split them okay. up. We basically said we have enough information to 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 but try the, and go forward. But the but other one impacts the other bid, obviously, right? Correct. Right. And so, that's, so why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't we have been made aware of that? I think you were indirectly. I probably didn't do a good job of explaining to you what your yeah. exposure was. I, I, again, I, I just want a clarification. No, and, and I guess so. From my perspective, there's a couple of moving pieces here. Did they make an error in their preliminary calculations? Absolutely. There's no doubt so about con that. Contact. Yeah. There's is no they, doubt about that. They used the wrong number, which is the basis for that nine and a half foot wide. Okay. I think the other piece with that is whether or not it resulted in any adverse impact to the town. From my perspective, if they had used the right number to begin with, we would have just modified the drawings to show that detail, mm -hmm. and that's what everybody would have bid. You know, the co having to put in that extra stone wasn't a result of that error. It was a result of the math being the math, you know, and them showing that that's what they need to make it work. Um, does that make sense? Somewhat, yeah. I, I'm just, my frustration is that this is, you know, obviously this is a big project and, and I, I just, I feel, I think that we, when we put things that, I don't know, yeah, the, trying to think of the right words, I don't know, Brad, you can help me out maybe, um, <laughs> maybe you can, um, I just would anticipate that we wouldn't run into issues like this, that of this significance, all I, on a project like this, uh, using you as our advisors, and uh, I, 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 we just didn't see it coming. Oh, I hear what you're saying. By the six pounds. I hear what you're saying. I, I, from my perspective, we recommend carrying ten percent of the project cost for contingency. Mm -hmm. In this case, it would have been one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. When you look at the total project cost, um, that is always carried because you don't know, it, on the earthwork side of things, you don't know what you're going to get into until you start digging. Uh, those buried head walls. I, I could have poked 100 holes. I could have right. had my geotechnical consultant spend 100 grand. We would, we would have never found but that, it. But that wasn't a design issue. No. It was, that was but this, a, this that conversation was. with Contact, um, if you read, and I'd be happy to give you guys a copy of the contract that you had, but this contract with them at the beginning, you know, they're going to rely on uh, the drawings prepared by Otter Creek Engineering and the uh, geotechnical investigations prepared by SW Cole. So they didn't, you, they had not finished their design, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Maybe I didn't properly explain that risk to you when we opted to go right. two different directions, but they, they asked for, and you guys paid them $70,000 to finish the design after I had already opened bids with Dubois. And we, we had to do something to meet that schedule. The other option, which you guys voted not to do, was to just stop, because right. we would have lost the whole year. We could have stopped. We could have regrouped. We could have said, hey, let's have a conversation. Let's open it up to other precasters, because we felt like their price might have been a little bit high with that extra you know, 100000 between December and May. 
We opted not to do that. We operated, opted to separate them out. And then in order to meet this schedule, and you know, here it is right now, second week in November, it's just set. We haven't even begun backfill. We're probably the second week in December by the time the roads opened up. So if you asked me if you guys made the right call to get the road opened up this year, which was the big push for the hospital, I think you still made the right call. I go back to what I said before. I don't think it certainly is more than you wanted to pay for it. I don't think I don't think it costs you anything from the perspective of if they had used the right number in the preliminary analysis, our plans would have showed that detail. You would have paid to put that stone in. It's not like there's any direct damage as a result of them forgetting it. Does that does that make sense? I understand what you're saying. Okay. I just I don't understand why we didn't know that was a liability pretty plain and clear as with you guys as our advisor. I, again, I, I probably didn't do a good job of explaining that piece. Yeah. So contractually, are we obligated to pay that? You know, if we sent that out to an attorney or anything, if we reviewed it, I don't really know anything about the process. I haven't reviewed it with an attorney. I would hate, I would hate to, I know just from, from a business standpoint, um, if, if contractually we, we need, we're obligated as a town to pay it, then we should pay it. But if we're not, then I, I feel like we need to explore options. Or, or what are there, what are our options? I mean, we're 50,000 over, you're saying we just need to pay it, right? Well, so I think there's a couple of things, right? You have three different contracts. The, to, the first piece is this is a change to Du Bois's contract. They did, they did that work to add that stone. I think you have to pay them. If you don't pay them and I were them, I'd yank my equipment off tomorrow. Right. You know, right. I so, I so I think there's that. that there's that part of it. The second piece is whether or not you feel, you know, we did something wrong or contact did something wrong. I can tell you that the amount of money that you're talking about there is more than my contract. Right. So it's it's relative. Contact. I don't know what you've paid them. I know you paid them seventy thousand to do the engineering. That's what this contract says right. here. But the pieces have been delivered and installed. Typically, their payments net thirty days after delivery. So we haven't paid them anything other than other the than the seventy. So from my perspective, there's one in there. There's one in there now. Check in there, yeah. So there is, and so if you don't want to pay them, or if you want to have a further conversation with me and them about what the who should you, be responsible have you had for conversations with them, I have not. So we just barely finished this with Du Bois within the last couple I, of weeks. I, I understand what you're saying about Du Bois. That was out, totally outside of yep. their control. I, I wanted to have an idea of what the cost was and I wanted to understand the town's perspective. Again, I think, you know, to, you said it earlier, you guys rely on me to be your advisor. Take it for what it's worth. When you get into these situations, you know, if you think that they're responsible and they, they did something, typically it results in some type of damage. And in this case, the damage is the town paid more than they wanted to but I don't think there was any actual damage there. The, if, if they had used the right number in that preliminary analysis, you would have had to do that or you would have had to put a 16 foot wide footing in or we would have said, let's look at a different structure or something. So then we look at it from a contract perspective and, and say, okay, well, who, who was at fault for not giving us the proper information in the contract? Yeah. And where does the liability fall at that point in time, right? It, absolutely. And so, the, so I mean, from a damage thing, yeah, yeah, damage perspective, I understand what you're saying, but now we're looking at a contract perspective. No, I get it, and it's it's your choice. But I think it, you know, those are conversations that you would have with me or I for think, them, and I, I think, think that's kind of where this is at. Is you guys need to decide. Well, that's why I'm glad you're I'm yeah. talking about. It. I think that what we need to look at, and I can't speak for the entire board, but I can, just my personal opinion is that I would think that I would like to have Otter Creek talk to contact and figure out I, I don't know I, I feel like it's not clear to me maybe it's just me and I can't wrap my head around it but um, is there Aaron your our contract with contact are we is there any recourse or is there any um, I mean, I feel like they should have. The had only the thing I saw, the only thing I saw on the front end, yeah. from an, I mean, I'm not an engineer. I can't. No, I get it. I, it's this the way these are. These are proprietary type structures, so they don't really. You know, it's not just that. None of these companies will release that information until you do a deposit payment. That's why you guys sign this. Now, if we had kept the contract the way that it was, Dubois would have signed this. 
right? Right. Two Boys would have been the one with the contract with them, and all we bought by splitting them out was eight to ten weeks of schedule time to get it done this year. And I, I think I explained that. Maybe I didn't go through the risk piece. Right. As, as I don't well remember much about the risk piece, but I do remember we were looking to get it done this year. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and, that, and that's why we split them out. Yeah. And that's why they, you have a separate contract with them. You know, originally the way that this was set up all the way into June was it was bid as one project. Yeah. That, that was always the numbers that I had given you guys. And, and you know, we came here and you guys looked at me and said, well, why are we looking at buying this for an extra hundred grand more? And the response from the precaster was, well, it's COVID delays, you know, it's other things. And we sat around the table and said, what do we do? Do we do this now or do we wait? And hopefully it's less money and you guys opted to go forward. I don't think I explained where we were at relative to the final drawings as good as I could have. Um, but again, I, I go back to what I said. If they had included it, we would have still had to put that four foot of stone in that trapezoidal shape underneath. You could make the case, Justin, that you know when you're in a change order situation that you're paying a premium for that it, you know, above and beyond what you would through a competitive process, just because there's no risk there, right? So when you're when you're doing a competitive bid process, contractors taking on risk, they decide where they're gonna put the risk and where they're not gonna put the risk. And in a competitive process, you might have got a slightly better number than the thirty-five thousand that we were talking about in this change order. Mm -hmm. But as far as the materials, the the time, the equipment. You know, that's that would have had to have been included in the bid if, if we had kept it as part of that contract. Yeah, but even it, maybe I'm looking at this wrong, but even by splitting this thing up, it, ultimately it probably it, it saved a little bit of money because they wouldn't generally do boys and them. They would mark up that material. Yeah. From them, anyways, at least fifteen percent. Typically, on the cost of the yeah, project, which yeah. is that was the other piece we talked about, and I think that's where I we think talked I about the risk was. You know, we saved, and even in, a, in an aggressive market, nobody's taking less than 5%. So if you exactly. just look at the 400000 that you spent, yeah. you know, 5% of that would have been Du Bois's markup for these types of, just not this situation, but they would have carried the risk with them. Simply for managing that part of the, yeah. the contract. Yeah. yeah. I remember some, when we talked about that back in June, or was it before June, or somewhere around that time, that that was one of the reasons to remove that from the Dubois contract was time it was initially. Time. It, was time. Uh, it, was, it was time. Yeah, and we, we had a conversation about the markup piece. So why wouldn't you guys have caught that before we and advise? My, one of my questions, I'm just curious. No, no, it's, that's completely valid. So why didn't why didn't I catch it? Because they, they, they did not give me their calculations, right? So I gave them the geotechnical report. We went out, we did two soil borings. I paid a a uh, geotechnical engineer to tell me how much weight can that soil hold. He told me. They wrote a report, they stamped it, I slid it across the table to those guys. I said, I need a structure that fits these dimensions, I gotta pass this much water, here's the site limitations, yada yada yada. They came back with design information, said here's your concept, this is what you need for footings, this is what you got going on, here's that information. They did not give me detailed calculations related to that until we were into construction. This was the timing of it. And frankly speaking, it could have been a lot worse. They, I got those detailed calculations while they were digging for the footings. If we had set and poured those footings, mm -hmm. this would have been a disaster. It would, uh, just being honest with you, it would have been extremely more expensive because we would have had to take them out. We would have never gotten to that point because we were waiting on those stamp drawings, but you can see, you know, you can see how aggressive this schedule was. We're waiting on, they said they were six to eight weeks to get us shop drawings and calculations. And meanwhile, we have Dubois out there relocating utilities and starting mass excavation for the structure just so that we can meet the end of the road here. And when push came to shove, it was the Friday before Labor Day, um, you know, looking at the numbers, so like, well, that they used the wrong value. Because on one side of the site, and the best theory that we have is that's where the old stream bed used to be over there. A lot of clay, nasty kind of material there, soft. And that's on the east side of this new structure. And the one closer to the bank is extremely firm, very hard till. And for whatever reason, in their preliminary design, they used the till number. What we did was we, we worked with SW Cole and Contech, and we came up with that ground improvement there to add that four feet of stone. 
so that that east side footing would act the same way as the west side footing. And that's what we had to do was put in that extra compacted crushed stone. Does that make sense? So why didn't I catch it? They didn't give me the calculations. So I gave them the information. They gave me preliminary data. We were headed down a path where we we go out to public bid, you know, and then they submit submittals and shop drawings. We review that information. Mm -hmm. That's where it happened. It just happened to be that we separated these two projects out and the town took some of that risk. But again, I go back to we would have had to do that anyway, or or put 16 foot wide in, which was really tricky on that east side because it's, it goes up so steep to the hospital. Yeah. And at the end of the day, um, how much did this change uh, add to the whole the overall cost of the project? Uh, Thirty-five thousand dollars, roughly. Right here. There's a, it's a. In the, Forty-seven four, but the the number related to the footing piece. Right. Um, the number related to the footing piece was thirty-six five sixty-eight seventy-five. It's that number right there. There was a separate cost related to those buried headwalls, and the the boulder that was the size of a uh, bus down there. Um, but that so that thirty. I mean, I get where you're coming from with it. And, and typically we carry that contingency for these types of things. This was bid as a lump sum. Sometimes you see state projects or other engineer projects where there's a bid, itemized bid sheet. It's got 50 different items on it to deal with some of the unknowns that come up related to earthwork. This was not set up that way. It's a, a lump sum contract. It was a change condition for them. Um, and f at least from my perspective, the total project costs, you know, construction costs about 1.2 million, $35,000 a fairly small sum of money on a percentage basis. That's why we carry contingency going to construction. And you know, the hardest part about my job is you can't s know what you don't see, yeah. and we don't see in the ground. So some of this stuff, you know, the, the rock and other things, those those come up. That's why we carry contingency. This is a little different, obviously, but you get the idea. <clears throat> it's still, still a large sum of money, even though it's small contingency now. No, it's it's a it's a significant amount of money. I don't want to deminimize that at all. But I think, um, you know, we we always recommend and and the the state and federal agencies that we work with, like the drinking water program and the clean water program, they require that you carry at least five percent of the project cost in contingency going into construction for these types of projects for that reason. So I think previously when we had discussions about it, the board felt as though um, it was. This should have been handled, and, and we wanted to see either Otter Creek or Contact pick up this piece of it. I think there was yeah. a misunderstanding between Vince and I on what that meant, and that's probably in my be. fault uh, because I didn't, I wasn't here at that meeting, okay. and I certainly, if I thought that that was the type of conversation that we were going to have as a group, I would have came back in September. When that didn't happen. Um, I told Vince there was no reason for me to come in October until we knew what the final number was because we had already agreed with Dubois to do it on a time and material basis. And as I said, I, I worked on the town's behalf to make sure that that was less than the agreed upon amount that, you know, that they had estimated around 45000 We finished up the 36 number. But now that I have firm numbers, I felt it was appropriate to come have this conversation with you all. Seems like it's about time. This increase in the footing would have happened if they had used the other numbers anyway. Yeah, so in simpler terms, they assumed that the soil could carry 5,000 pounds per square foot, and it could only carry 3,000 pounds per square foot, because out of the two borings that we did, one could carry five, the other could carry three. They used the wrong number. I don't know if those are the actual numbers. I'm just yeah. using that for... 
did you guys give? How how did they use the wrong numbers? Why did they use the wrong numbers? I don't know why they used the wrong numbers. I gave them both numbers. That's how those reports are prepared. We drilled two holes. You got to give them all the information. You right. can't you can't just give them the information that's appropriate, right? You got to give any any subsurface yep. information you know. You got to give them everything. So they had both, and they they happened to use the wrong one. And you haven't had a conversation with them about why they use the the uh, heavier soil. I had a couple of conversations with them about why they used it. I wasn't all that impressed by it when yeah. the issue came up, for lack of a better term. But I have not had a conversation with them about them being financially responsible for it. I didn't know what the number was. I hadn't had this conversation with the board to understand your perspective. Um, again, you haven't paid them, so to just maybe take a giant leap backwards. Du Bois did the work. I think they should be paid. You haven't paid contact. If you feel this warrants some other additional conversation, I'd be happy to bring the gentleman who provided the contract here to your next board meeting, and you can talk to him about it. Um, but you, you haven't actually paid them, and that, that whole thing is sitting out there installed right now. So from a contract or a leverage perspective, you, you guys are kind of holding the cards on that side of things. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. I think you should have that conversation with them on our behalf or bring them to a board meeting for us and be here with us. I, I'll have it. I'd be happy to have it with them. I think they should come here and talk with you guys if you feel that they need to pay for it. I think they're going to say it's kind of the engineer's uh, explanation, right? But they're going to say if they had used that right number, this is what it would have been. So they're, they're not going to want to just pay for it. So if you'd like to have that conversation, I'd be happy to invite them here and, and participate with you all at that same time. I, I think it wouldn't hurt to have that conversation. That's might help them in the future. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> just, just one question, Justin, on this, if I may. There's a check in there now that would have to be, I can hold it. we would have to hold that's oh set to go to contact as their hold next payment. Board. I'd rather hold it just so that way, because I, I know I'm going to be paying them out. Can I, can I make a suggestion? Okay. You have a con they supplied the rest of the structure. It met the requirements. It's in the ground. I don't know. It, before you withhold payment, I would either get a legal opinion on it, or I would pay them the amount due oh, less that. less the amount that's in question here, um, because I I really. You're not talking about a small amount of money. You're talking about four hundred thousand right. dollars. Oh, absolutely. So, so what? What is the payment? Well, I don't know what the payment amount is in there, but is it for the entire project or the entire? It's, yeah, I'm one to make that. Yeah, we would. We would. It should should be the balance less yeah. seventy five thousand, less seventy thousand dollars, whatever you paid them up front. That's yeah, a significant amount. Yeah, but I would suggest. I mean, they've they've delivered it. They've Let's they've. Pay them up. To, hey, do we have the wing walls? Are we, they here yet? They've been delivered. Okay, um, but they haven't been in, they haven't been installed yet. So du Dubois has them all okay. sitting on a trailer. They got I'm a good. bunch of trucks from Bellevue <laughs> to deal with it. Two hundred and three thousand three ninety or nine thirty. Excuse me, two hundred three nine thirty. So that might not even be the full amount. I'd have to check, but yeah, it's close. Yeah, that's the full amount anyway. So uh, it's, it's we should be okay. We still have enough retainage, even if that gets paid. Can we verify that before we approve those? Yeah, I can double check the numbers. Yeah. You can improve it without this one then? You know, I can pull this out. All right, so we'll have when we make the motion, we'll have to add that check number as an exception. To accept yeah. that. And the other thing will be uh, what you want to do, you run by a legal department or? Yes, I think we should run the contracts through. So, can I ask, is it okay to sign the change order with new voice? To add that work in, I, I mention it for two reasons. One, their their application for payment, what's what's due to them here, uh, doesn't even include the uh, setting of that arch and all the work that they've done. You know, we're typically a week and a half to two weeks behind, so like all the work that they did last week and setting it and doing all that is not included in what they're asking for payment. They are asking for payment for that crushed stone, and um, again, I I think they're owed that. Um, I wouldn't look at it as you overpaying them at this point because, again, they, they just set $400,000 worth of concrete that wasn't included in what needs to be paid to them. 
there's still quite a bit to finish for them as well. But yeah. Your voice did the work, it's an engineering. Well, I mean, hopefully that the, now that everything's in the ground, the, uh, the, uh, the culvert should take and stand the test of time because of that work, and I think it's well worth the money spent. Mm -hmm. But I, have, I would have no troubles paying two boys. Right. I concur. So similar to those other things, would it be possible to authorize Vince to sign those just so that we can get them in the queue to be processed? Sign what? The option one and option change order one. The two, the two change, the two orders. change orders. Um. Because board call, I guess. But. It'll just come down to a, a question of what we end up paying, uh, how we decide to pay the uh, concrete work, the precast. So these two change orders are just only for new boys, right? And there's a substantial. There's still substantial with the uh, precast company. Retainage? Yeah, we'll, again, we'll validate that on the, on the contract, what's been paid and what's, what the balance we've been paying before. So we'll know exactly what that amount is. Is there a corresponding change order with contact that takes out the transportation? I mean, so you're using the right number when you yes, we, how much you... Yep. Yeah, we, we had already done that separately. Um, at least it's been documented, I guess, in their contract that went to the town. That's why they submitted that payment for that. $200,000 number. I need to double check those, but yeah, I'm confident that that's less than 50000 that we took out for transportation. Confident. 99%. Sure. So you got to approve change orders, but we don't have all the information. Well, this one change order is a is a net zero, right? Yes. Yep. Change order one. Change order no one's cost. a net zero. So that one doesn't really matter. It's the one there that uh, is for the the uh, work in stone that they put in. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. And I mean, because of the work in stone, hopefully that culvert will last till what 50, 60 years or so. If I, not longer. I would hope, yeah. I mean, the the other piece with this, they did that based on a conversation with Vince and myself, and they moved yeah. forward. They could have stopped and yeah. you know, demanded yeah. you know, that we get it resolved and have everything signed. I think they, they worked in good faith on the town's behalf to just make sure that we didn't lose time. Schedule-wise, it cost us about a week and a half to deal with this because we had to buy a little more rebar and some other stuff yeah. that came with that footing. Uh, and obviously more stone that needed to be trucked in, so it's about a week and a half worth of time. But they, they kept moving because if they had stopped, it would have, you know, two weeks for a select board meeting, we would have been out a month schedule-wise, yeah. and it wouldn't be opened up. So. Yeah. Well, I think that's one of the things to remember is have that road open for the winter. I guess I'd be comfortable making a motion to go ahead and move forward with the uh, signing these change orders and making sure that we have the retainage with the concrete uh, precast company until we have further find out where we're at with that uh, that increase in cost. You want to have uh, change that so we have Vince sign it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that Vince would sign these. Seconds. Any discussion? Yeah. Those in favor? Right. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. So then it'll be it'll be up to contact to. Uh, I'll, I'll have a conversation with them tomorrow. Yeah. And what's your next regularly scheduled meeting? Uh, it's first Monday in uh, December. Assuming there's no holidays there. Right. First and third. 
anything else for them. No, I think they've done a good enough this job. This six, right? December six. Yeah, I won't be here for that one. Municipal road grant and aid program for hydro seed purchase. Yep, I was actually at the last meeting to confirm. Thank you. We had that in the budget. Yep. I had talked to Diane. We do have that. It's it's about fifteen hundred dollars. Thank you. Supply budget, Thank highway supply Thanks, budget. Rob. Thanks, Rob. Yep. Thank you, Rob. All right. That was the only question I believe we had on that. That was. No. no and then. You want to authorize me to sign it? Or authorize Vince to sign that. I would entertain a motion to uh, approve the uh, municipal road grant aid program. Equipment and purchase. So, so moved. So move. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor, say aye. 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 What's that? The addition of the tires for the loader we want to talk about in this section as well. Oh, okay. While we're on the highway stuff. Yeah, so while we're on the highway stuff, we got the municipal road grant for our tires for the loader potentially. Yeah, so the issue with the loader tires is every day there's at least one that goes flat. It's always a different one, but there's always one going flat every day. They need new tires. Uh, Tim's recommendation was to get a set of winter tires. Um, he's found a dealer that'll sell them to us at the uh, government price. It's $82.50. Uh, then he doesn't have to mess around with chains or anything like that. Um, and they'll they'll last uh, probably the rest of the life of the loader for us as well. Because I think the loader is approaching seven years right now. He's absolutely sure it's the tires, not the rims? Yep. He's okay. sure it's the tires. They're pretty well used up. Okay. And that's in the budget? Yep, yeah, we checked the we budget. Do have I enough. talked to Diane in the yeah, equipment. As long as we don't budget. have tremendous repairs, hopefully. And we certainly have. There's, yep, there's enough in the equipment maintenance budget. For After, the budget. if we were to approve that amount, how much is left? Do we have any idea? I don't off the top of my head, and I don't have it right here. So in the winter uh, equipment and repairs, we have 40000 And we have only spent a couple thousand in that so far. The winter is young. Yeah, <laughs> it is. However, what we could do, and I suggested it to um, Vince, is that maybe uh, because that loader is used all year round, we'll that summer. I could split it between summer and winter. So I've got 40000 for winter. And for summer, I've got 32,000. How much of our summer 30, did we 000. use? Excuse me? We have. Summer, um, I don't have that number right here, but I know it was under 1,000 for the summer, really. But of course, we have the summer months coming up, too. But right. still, we've got 30,000 in one and 40 in another. Yeah, so that should certainly take care of those tires. Make this together. So. Yeah. Doesn't do any good with flat tires. A lot of labor to pump it up every day. <laughs> I make the motion to move forward with the tire purchase as presented. That's second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <clears throat> All right, the other two items we're bringing up that we added. Last All right. Multi-use path exercise. Any discussion? Yeah, I sent you all a, an email that has a link in it. So I'm not going to show the short video that, that this came with, but uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's it's basically an outdoor exercise area that would go on the multi-use path over at the town center. Um, I know that Tom and Carla have been working on this and asked me to bring this to the board tonight um, to talk about it. Uh, the, the public works group has 18K um, that they would be willing to uh, contribute toward this. There's also a $65,000 grant that we are eligible for um, for this from the uh, MGP Healthcare. 
that they have on that. Um, the hospital has been approached and they are very interested in contributing some dollars to this as well. Uh, we don't have a dollar figure from them yet. And Carla is also has another um, uh, corporation that is also interested in, in making a large donation to this. I don't have the, uh, the dollar amount for that yet. But based on that, based on not knowing those numbers, just with what we have right now, it requires a balance of $135,000 to be raised. Um, between Carl and Tom, they believe that uh, we can probably get that between those two donors to raise that. Um, and what is this supposed to do for us? It's, it's, it's part, it would be part of the multi-use path around the Newtown Center Zone. Yeah. And it would attract, potentially, uh, if you look at the video, people who like to walk, hike, do exercises, and do them outside, yoga stretching. There's, uh, again, the video has a, it's, it's a big wall that's there as well. Um, it's a lot of concrete. Well, the only thing that throws me here is, that, is when they say exercise center, I, I envision a gym. It's, it's not a gym, right? It's obstacles, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, like step so it's a confidence course. And it's, it's like a course, but it's in a, you know, a, I don't have the dimensions of it. Uh, but I'd recommend, again, this is just for discussion yeah. tonight to make you aware of where we're at. There is a, uh, a video of it, uh, what it looks like, how it's used. It's about two minutes long that I sent everyone on the board a link to. to have that's the actual, at. that's actually what they want to put in, it's not. Uh, that's actually what they want to put, what it shows in this video. Okay. Yep. I have no idea. So, uh, the hospital was, was pretty excited and uh, so was uh, the MVP healthcare for the, for providing a grant to have that, so. Yep. Sounds like a good update. It sounds like they'll probably come to us with the other potential donors and the, the figures well, Possibly, yeah, well. I mean. So it's, it's to raise the awareness tonight, I can take a look at it and then uh, we'll see if the, uh, the other donors come through or if the town wants to contribute towards it at some point. Excellent. Thank you, Vince. Uh, IRPA fund dis uh, usage discussion. That's no it's always there. on there. Well, we added one thing, right? At the last, uh, we were supposed to add. Someone was supposed to add one thing. Yes, I'm pretty sure I didn't uh, revise the list and send it back out. Okay. Good thing we have a reminder. I'll revise the list and send it out. All right. Let me send it. Uh, Matt Romei, letter of interest for EMD and resume for discussion. Yep, Mr. Uh, it's in your package. He submitted, uh, I think there's about three pages in there of information with regards to that. And in addition to that, um, as requested, I did sp speak to the our chief of police on this as well. Uh, he is also interested in that taking on that role for the town. So we do have you know, a couple of uh, people of interest for this EMD position now. For the board to uh, so we, have, we have two people, we have two positions. We have a coordinator and a director, right? Yeah, and we also have Bruce that's still interested in the coordinator role as well. Is there a thing in this position that if you had two individuals uh, you know, a, a, a primary and a secondary, given that they're out of town, is there a structure in that board for that? The, the way that I, I read it, and I, I can look at it again, um, the, the short answer is no, because you have, you have one EMD and you have one coordinator. Are there any trainings they have or education they're supposed to have? The, there are some requirements, and, I, and again, I'd have to take a look at what they are for that. I believe both the uh, the chief and Mr. Rolay have the have the qualifications. So I know that a lot of these positions are like there's statutes according to what need like who gets them, um, the default, whatever. Um, can you find out if we can have two people? Yep, I, I'll take a look. Dual roles. Yep. Um, for either of them, any of them, like what exactly we need to fill. Yep. I don't know much. I, I may have this. to make. I'll make some calls to get those details. It's not in the in the, the way Just that it's written up. Yeah. If you can. Yep. Um, I'll make some calls. And is there any special uh, training for the coordinator position? 
That I don't know the answer to. I'd have to check. I think Flo, don't you have some training in that area? I do. I have some training with FEMA and um, you know, most likely there is requirements. So if you can look into that, Vince, that would be wonderful. And then we're, well, I mean, we need to, we Vince has a deadline path for people to express interest or is there still time? Oh, it's still, it's still open if there's anyone interested. Okay. Okay. We need to make a decision according to. So, yeah, we're, so, we're, I mean, when Bruce brought it to the board at the last meeting, it was already due. Yeah, the, the deadline right. for appointing someone is is upon us. Right. Should be, Absolutely. Should be at the next. I meeting. only mentioned that just in case there's other people within the town that are interested in whether we had put a deadline out for people to express interest. Now, in the interim, do we have an emergency management director in place? Uh, I think by the book, that's probably you. So, so yes. Board. Coordinator. Yep. The yes. Coordinator, I think Bruce is filling that role, but the EMD right. is... Okay. Perfect. I'll <laughs> step right up when I need to. <laughs> okay. Justin, can I add a few things? Oh, hey, This Keith, is yeah. Keith. Go ahead. <clears throat> so, I think we're talking about two different things here in the same conversation, which was a little confusing. Matt Romey, I, and Joe Staub and I discussed this at the fire department a few weeks ago. Um, what Matt is interested in is the emergency management director position in the town, which is the position that you, Justin, currently fill. Yep. That's what you said. That position will also basically by default be the position that gets appointed to the new REMC, the Regional Emergency Management Committee. The REMC, which is discussion point number two, is what you're talking about for those appointments, Is has two people per town. One is the emergency management director and the other is a member of either the fire department or the police department, somebody in the emergency services. If uh, Chief Pomprian has interest in doing that, I would be happy for him to do it because uh, Matt Romey, I also is on the fire department and we would still have representation essentially from the fire department as well. But he, he's asking for emergency management director position, which is, which is technically different than those other two appointments, but it really does overlap. Do you understand that? Clear. So I think, I don't think that clarified anything for me, quite honestly. Because um, that the REM, Regional Emergency Management Committee, is going to be taking, the, there's two positions there. Explain, say that one more time, real quick, simple. There's two positions that the town select board has to appoint to the REMC. Right. Coordinator. They're the the and don't worry about the coordinator. Don't worry about coordinator. There's two positions. One is the emergency management director, basically, or their designee. The other is a member of the town who is on the fire department or the police department. And it sounds like Chief Pomprian is expressing interest in filling that. So basically, what we heard about this. Yeah. So. What will happen is there's two there's yeah. two positions other than the coordinator. The uh, Matt wants to take and be the director, which is a town appointed position, and then the police uh, chief wants to be. What was it again? He wants the town appointed. He wants the town appointed. He, same one. He wants the EMD. Well. He wants to be the appointed that designates. Right. No, he he doesn't want to be the EMD. He wants to be the second member on the regional emergency Hold on. Who? Let's not speak for people. Um. We're gonna we'll find out more about these positions. Um, because we have our chief of police. You still have an interest in it, I'm assuming, Keith. We have, or, or maybe not, but we have Matt Romeo as well that has an interest in it. And well, the two positions 
what Keith was saying is, is that if Matt is appointed, the police, the uh, fire department has a rep somewhere. A rep, and then the other position would be the uh, be the right, police. We chief. haven't even been told about those two positions, so I'd like to get some information like in front of us that we can look at. I thought we went over some of this. The He's other saying day. there's other than the coordinator, there's two other positions. Yeah. So it's this is I'll, all. I'll get, some, I'll get some clarity. We'll get some clarification. Okay, yeah, the coordinator does not automatically have a position on that group. Well, I understand. Uh, okay, so there's only two positions on that group. Um, Bruce sent you the information in the statute two weeks ago. That information was provided to the, to the board yeah. shortly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. As well. But I'll, I'll go through it again. And I'm not very good at my job, apparently. Um, so we'll go through that. We'll have to do it at the next meeting. Sorry. Yeah. Well, it sounds like there's still up things. there. There's oh. still a little bit of interest in that position, yeah. is my understanding. Yeah. So. And I, I would like clarification. I mean, I, I, I understand it. Yeah. yeah. Um, what it's worth. Anything else yeah. for... Uh, well, it's typically Matt's letter, not any kind of other discussion really around that as an agenda item. So, all right, uh, West letter discussion. So this is just information for the board. This is a concerned resident expressing his uh, position, and uh, he has written some letters to the to the select board, to the uh, state's attorney, to the governor, and I believe even to the president. This isn't a Berlin resident, though. State resident. I think it's just a state resident, and he is raising the issue regarding the um, marijuana uh, legality shop, of it. The legality of the marijuana shop that, that wants to come into Berlin. So this is just information for the board. Sounds like he's a Barry resident at this post office box. I'm sure people in the room are familiar with this individual. I don't actually. So again, it's some light reading for the board. Excellent. I read through them once. I'll read okay. through them again. It's one of the ones I did read. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's all that was for. I was providing that information. Excellent. Um, the uh, budget discussion, Diane. Okay. So what I've done is I've given everybody a first draft. This is a very rough, rough first draft. And I've gone through with the department heads and Vince. So um, there's some numbers not final yet. I'm still waiting for the insurance company to give us the updated numbers. You should have one. Right there. Okay, good. okay, so so there will be changes. But I wanted to the board to at least start looking at it. Uh, and what I'm going to do during this week is I'm going to be sending you emails that just gives you point, you know, some of the points that we're looking at changing. So in other words, I am calculating, like for the police department, um, what they're going to have for salaries. I'm going with a 3% increase because I don't know what the union contract is going to be yet. Okay. And so those are the types of points that I will be emailing to you. But I wanted you to have a look at it so that when we start discussing it in December, you'll have... You, if you have questions, let me know so that way I can be looking it up. But it just gives us some ideas of what we're looking at. Like I said, I have gone through it with the uh, department's heads and bits. Well, one thing I'd just like to say that we just need to keep in the back of our mind to be aware of as well is going through the negotiations. Right? The, the way the contract is, is once we ratify the contract, right. it becomes retroactive. There's nothing in the budget for that retroactive pay to bring them up to date once that contract is ratified at this point. Okay. Okay. When do we want to have our budget done by? We need to have it done by usually the end of December is ideal, but I think we have to vote on it. It has to be final in January. 
beginning of January. And everything has to be into the printer in February. Now, last year we had uh, where we got, I would like to have it where we know what the school is going to do before we approve our budget. Uh, is there any way to do that? I don't know. I don't have anything to do with your budget. Well, we're under, we're under a certain time constraints. We have to have ours done by a certain time. We're the middle of the school has to as well, though, right? I don't know. I'd like to know because that was one of the things we could have made some, some changes that would have been good for long term with the town. Yeah. I, I think it would be good for future planning if we ran the budget around after we know what that kind of variable is that's outside of our control. You've probably been struggling with it for years and years and years. But. Okay. Anything else? The vast letter. Uh, maybe it's it. I was okay. 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 All right. Uh, vast letter of support. Yeah, they're looking for the town to uh, provide them a letter of support for the grant that they're applying for that would uh, cover some of the cost of the bridges that they put in, the parking lot that we could actually, uh, they've asked me for the price for the putting in that parking lot up on Darling Hill and we'll actually, they'll actually include that in the grant and we'll get reimbursed for that work and material uh, that the town is going to do up there as well. So they're just looking for a letter of support from the town um, for the work that they're doing on the trail. And yeah, and but David sent that letter, wasn't there a draft of it? Like a, yeah, one of the emails? I don't think so. I, if there was, that'd be great because I I'm, know I'm, I'm the one that's going to be drafting it for you, for you guys to review, but uh, I don't recall seeing a, a draft. I just want to check. So then I forward that. Maybe I didn't forward the attachment. I don't. I may have. I, don't, I just don't recall seeing it. to draft a letter. Uh, I'll reach out to Dave if he does have a, a sample and present it to you guys for approval and gals. Mm, no, I guess it wasn't. It was just a win. Sorry. All right. Um, Thank you. So Dave from the Tunnel Chickens had sent an email asking for us to support um, their application for the grant. Made sense by one, obviously. I make the motion to provide a letter of support and have Vince draft that for our review. I'd second that. <coughs> Any discussion? Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Uh, Approval of license permits, vouchers, and applications. Do you want me to read it just because I have all the information as far as pulling this other check out? Can we, can we I think that? that would be wonderful, Diane. Yeah. Thank you. We can read that for I can just read then. it so that way, because I have to pull this other check out. There's not much on it. I would make that okay. motion. So payroll warrant 22 09 for payroll from October 24th, 2021 mm -hmm. to November 6, 2021. Paid on November 8, 2021, in the amount of $47,942.86. Payable warrant 22G08 with checks 21566 to 21594 in the amount of $377,406.13. Holding check 21575 in the amount of 203000 930 for a total of 173000 47548. So moved. Thank you, Diane. I thought we were going to check to see what the retainage is. Why are we holding this check for 200 something thousand if we were if we were checking to make sure there was retainage to cover the amount of just my understanding. Can we get a second? We got a second. Any discussion? Go ahead. Am I missing something? Just I, formality. Okay. No, I'm, I'm just saying, I thought well, the whole I'm, purpose 
Well, even by pulling that check out, a contact is is being held is their payment is held up until we re remedy this overage, whatever you want to call okay. it. Okay. So um, even if we were to have paid that check, there's still some there's a substantial amount that we still owe that we still owe them. Owe them. So either way, it works. Well, that's why I'm wondering why we're holding this one out, only because uh, the amount of what it is, I, I think that... So I think we're withholding it to until we verify the amount that we have is enough to cover that overage until the board decides. Okay, I'm good with that. I just... Yeah. Um, I know that the engineer said we should send payment, including that, but nobody, we don't know for sure if we had yeah. that much we're gonna, left. We're going to confirm that and get back we're to the board right away that. and then... And then, unfortunately, okay. due to that circumstance, which um, is costing the town potentially additional money, um, it's going to delay their payment as a result of that error, which is really not our fault. Um, so, be, because the information, because of the way things played out, and the information was inaccurate, and now we have this overage. No, I understand what it's for. I just it's going to delay their payment by a few weeks, obviously, okay. um, until we get a resolution on it. So well, and to make perfect. you aware, this payment is due November 29th. So, <clears throat> so you've got enough time then. Okay. Well, our next meeting is December, but still, you're looking just you know just two, two days, days. days. So we, yeah. And we'll help them get here to have that discussion. <laughs> we'll <make> <laughs> <motivation>. <laughs> A little bit of leverage. Yeah. Any additional okay. discussion? Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Please uh, tell me. We can. Um, so we have meeting uh, minutes for May 27th, 2021, and meeting minutes for November 1st, 2021. I make the motion that we approve the meeting minutes from May 27th, 2021, as presented. I'd second that one. Oh, wait a minute. That one, I wasn't here, right? You were there. Okay, that's what we've been waiting I for. I second it. Yeah. <laughs> Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And then we have minutes for um, November 1st. I additionally make the motion to approve the minutes of November 1st as presented to us this evening. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Sawyer abstains. All right. Round table then. Nothing. Well. Nothing, thank you. Diane. Oh, I do have, is there any update to the Marvin Road concerns that were presented at the last board meeting after the walkthrough? Road. Uh, no, we have uh, Tim and I are going to go up this week uh, to walk and talk with uh, Mr. Noyce. Excellent. So, Thank you. Brad? Nope. Dave? Nope. Bail? No, any executive session? No. Nope. Okay, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Yeah.